Hey guys, welcome back to Adventure Build. We're living in a truly unique time in our history where isolating yourself isn't frowned upon, but sought after. Now, the one thing you have to be concerned about when isolating yourself in the backcountry while overlanding is navigation. You want that navigation to be spot on every turn. The only way to know that for sure is to having those navigational devices like your Garmin, your GPS, your phone, your TomTom, -tom, whatever that device is, you want it at your fingertips. You want to be able to go back and check your status, check your location at any given time in your trip. The only way to do that is to have that navigational device on your dash where you can see it, reference it, and it's right there at your fingertips. The answer to that problem is right here. This is the Expedition Essentials 3T PAM for my 2020 Tacoma. It's going in today, so stay tuned. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm kind of a technology nerd. I like having my phone, my tablet, I have a backup Garmin 510 set up for navigation as well. I like having redundancies to my navigation. The last thing you want to do is have something go down and you're stuck out in the desert with no way to get out. Having three or four redundant systems set in place will ensure that you'll get out every time. This Expedition Essentials 3T PAM is the gold standard when it comes to your accessory mounts. The 3T PAM accepts this diamond plate ram mount and you can fit five of these on the plate itself. Now these can hold your phone, your tablet, your Garmin, a camera, a CB radio. It can pretty much hold anything that you can find a mount for. Also in the center of the 3T PAM are two high speed USB chargers that wire into the dash itself to give you charging capabilities from the bracket itself which is really impressive. All right, so let's get this started. These are all the tools you're going to need to get this job done. Socket driver, 10 millimeter deep socket, pair of pliers, Phillips head screwdriver, nine millimeter wrench, a rounded off file, 564 pilot drill bit, one quarter inch drill bit, center punch. I like using these Stabilo white marking pencils, uh, two clamps, a drill, and a Dremel with a rasp tool on the end. Now you don't need the Dremel, you can get this job done with a file, the Dremel just makes it that much easier. Step number one, you're going to need the base plate to the 3T PAM. Now this is that powder coated black piece that narrows with a little bend at the end of it. This is the piece that actually fits on top the factory bezel here and it fits perfectly. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this piece up in place in the bezel and you can see the little notch that it will sit in on top of the bezel, put it in there, and then we're gonna mark the holes with my white marking pencil. I will put the link to these pencils in the description. This is the Stabilo white marking pencil. It does a really good job, even on all kinds of different materials, plastic, metal, wood. I think these are just a really good marking tool. Now you're going to take the bracket. You can see how it narrows on this end and it gets thicker and there's an angle. It goes along with the molding of the bezel itself. It's going to fit in here. You'll want this to be completely flat, flush, and pushed all the way into the groove. And now there is no movement at all. I'm going to mark all the holes. Now that we've marked the holes, we're going to pull this bracket off and set it aside. Now that we have the holes for the bottom bracket marked on the factory bezel, we're going to remove the bezel off the dash. Start on one end, use your fingertips and pull straight out. It's gonna feel like you're breaking something, but really you're separating the tabs and pulling it straight off. Step two is using a 10 millimeter deep socket to remove all four bolts to the head unit. In step number three, we're going to be removing the climate control 
bezel on your dash. To gain access to be able to remove this bezel, you have to remove a screw down by your foot in order to pull the left side of the steering column uh, trim piece off just a little bit to be able to excess behind that. Now the bolt you want to remove is right here and it takes a 10 millimeter socket to loosen it. Now with the bolt out, grab the bottom of the console and just start pulling and it will separate. When you're separating the panel below the steering wheel, don't pull it all the way off. You only need a couple inches on the right side to gain your clearance you need for the climate control bezel. And now that we have the clearances we need, we're going to pull the climate control bezel straight off the dash, same as we did the head unit bezel. Now the purpose of all this panel removal is to gain access behind the dash. We're going to tap into the power of the cigarette lighter to power the high-speed charger for the 3T PAM. Now same as removing the bezel for the head unit, the climate control panel is removed in the same manner with our fingertips only. We're going to pry between the climate control panel and the radio, this little plastic piece here that differentiates between the two sections. So now we're just going to grab and pull straight out. And it's free. Now with the climate control panel completely free, we're going to just set it down here and let it hang. The cigarette lighter that we're tapping into for power is right here. The actual connector for it is back behind the panel, down kind of deep in here. It's gonna be pretty hard for me to get video of this, is grab onto the connector that holds onto the cigarette lighter and just pull the connector itself, not the wire, but the connector straight back. So as you can see, this is the wiring harness that powers the cigarette lighter. You can tell that there is a purple wire and a white with a black line wire. The purple wire is going to be positive. The white wire with the black line is gonna be negative. Negative. We're going to be using these wire taps first. These are a quick and easy way to tap any wire into a pre-existing wire without having to strip that wire down and solder it. It's fast and efficient and very effective. You can see how one is a pass-through on top and this one is solid. It bottoms out. The bottom one is where our new wire is going to go into and the top one is going to be the pre-existing factory wire. So let me show you how these things go on. It's going to be a little hard to film but I'm sure you guys will get the gist. First things first, you want to orient these so that the wire that you are using is gonna to orient to the up position. Try to hang on to the wire and pull down as much of the loom as you can to expose as much of the purple and the white wire as possible. We're gonna start with the positive, put the wire tap onto the positive wire and make sure you're working positive to positive and negative to negative. Then we're going to insert the positive wire till it bottoms out. And now we're going to close the door of the wire tap and squeeze all the way down. And now take your pliers and crimp it down real good. And you wanna make sure this is all the way on. Everything is nice, tight, and protected. I pulled the wire loom down a little bit to get a little bit more wire to work with because that was a little too tight. And the same thing for the negative, we're going to Make sure that the wire is indexed facing up. That way both the positive and negative wire to the high-speed charger go up because that's the way that they have to index. We're gonna slide the wire tap over the white and black line coming out of the cigarette lighter, just like so. And then we're going to grab our black wire, which is our negative ground. And we're going to slide that onto the other side. And keeping that nice and tight. We're going to use our pliers and crimp down on that metal blade that is going to push through both wires. And now that's nice and tight in there. You can see that the blade is flush with the mount itself. And now we're going to take this door and close the door on it until it snaps. And that's it. The directions call for you to feed the wire behind the stereo before you actually wire it up. 
I couldn't do that. I needed all the slack I can get because of video. Otherwise the wire would have cut across the camera lens. That's just the way it is. Not a big deal. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the head unit out of the dash and feed the wire up behind it and then put the head unit back. Before I do any of that though, I'm going to test the cigarette lighter and I'm gonna test the high speed charger on the 3T PAM. I wanna make sure everything works before I start wiring things up permanently. Now I'm going to test the 3T PAM to make sure it's operational. The vehicle is on. I have not yet reconnected the socket to the cigarette lighter. However, this should still work. I'm going to plug it in and it's now on. It's charging. The high speed power port is operational. Now we're going to reconnect the socket to the cigarette lighter and make sure that's operational as well. Reinstalling this socket is gonna be the same as when we removed it. Just putting it back on those two pins in this orientation, just like that. Now be careful of these two wires. You don't wanna crimp them. And you definitely don't wanna get them stuck uh, between something that might have them come loose later. Now with the socket power reapplied, I'm gonna plug in our cigarette lighter adapter and make sure that it works. All right, power lights on. GoPro is charging, socket is operational. I'm going to take the wires of the 3T PAM high-speed charger. I'm going to pull out the stereo. I'm going to route it up and out the side. So now it will be just sitting and orienting just like this for now. And make sure you move the wires so that everything is free and moving. You don't want anything caught up on a screw or something that might cause issues for you later. We're going to install the two bottom bolts to the stereo here and here. Before we install these two bolts, let's just get this climate control panel reinstalled. That way it is completely out of the way. On the left side of the climate control panel, there's a little hook on this edge here, as well as a little hook on the panel. Those two pieces hook into each other, so make sure those go in first. Start by fishing that edge through. Line up your tabs. and then push firmly forward. Now that we've got the climate control panel reinstalled, we're going to reinstall the two bottom screws of the stereo. And these are the factory screws to the stereo, the ones you removed not minutes ago. Step five is going to be installing the two brackets that go onto the top holes of the stereo head unit. The smaller bracket goes on the left, on the driver's side, and the longer bracket goes on the right, the passenger side. Using the factory bolt, we're going to insert the driver's side bracket, which is the smaller, shorter bracket, into the top hole of the head unit. All right, that's one down. Now we're going to install the driver's side, which is the longer bracket. Utilizing the same factory bolt, and the bracket mounts in this orientation. And you can see this is a nice snug fit here against the head unit. Now we're going to tighten these down. All right, it's all in there nice and tight. For these next couple steps, we're gonna be here on the bench top. When we had the stereo bezel in the vehicle, we marked the holes that we have to drill. Now with the top plate, I just like to make sure this is a measure twice, cut once scenario. So I'm taking the bracket, I'm pressing it up into the groove and just visually looking to make sure that the white marks that I made line up and it looks really good. The only thing that I'm gonna need to mark that I didn't was where the wiring harness pops through at the top of the bezel. I'm gonna take my white pencil and make sure all the holes are lined up and then scribe over this notch here. And now I have to drill some holes and remove that material where the wiring harness pops through. Let me show you how this base plate actually fits into the bezel perfectly. From this plastic here to this black plastic here, this is actually all recessed from the bezel. When you put this on, it's now flush this way and flush on the back side here. And you can see just looking down, all the holes line up perfectly. And I'm going to recheck everything. And this is where the wiring harness is going to pop through. All right, everything's looking great. I feel very confident that 
when I drill these holes, it will fit perfectly. Looking at this base plate, there are a lot of holes on this thing. I want to point out the holes that actually matter for our application. This hole here is the first hole. This is the second hole. This is the third hole. This is the fourth hole. And this is the fifth hole. All of these smaller holes that if you look on the backside are actually threaded, they are to a standalone plate that we do not have for our application. And then you can see as it translates onto the bezel, slotted hole, large hole, large hole, large hole, slotted hole. And of course, where the wiring harness will pop through here. Before we start drilling, I like to center punch everything. I'm just going to go through, hold the bezel firmly, and center punch. Move to the second larger hole, center the punch up on there, center punch it. Moving to the third hole, make sure it's lined up right in the center of the hole, center punch it. Fourth hole, and the fifth hole. Now that I have everything center punched, I'm going to start the holes with a 5 64th inch pilot hole. Like I said before, this is a drill once scenario. I do not want to make a mistake. I'm going to transition to the quarter inch drill bit. Start on the far left. And on these first slotted holes, I'm just going to give the drill a little back and forth motion to elongate these holes just a pinch. And on to the second hole. The third hole, the fourth hole, and the fifth hole. And the fifth hole, again, a elongated hole. All of the holes are drilled and I just cleaned them up by pulling out the excess plastic on the backside. Now I'm gonna grab my Dremel with my little auger bit here. And all I'm gonna do is just drill out this little part here where the wiring harness is gonna pop through. I'm gonna take my little file, rounded file, and I'm just gonna knock all these sharp edges down. That way the wiring harness is well protected. And just check with your finger. If it's sharp on your finger, it's gonna be sharp on the wiring harness as well. All right, that feels pretty good. The next step is going to be installing the base plate onto the bezel, and this is going to be a fitment, kind of a dry run. We're gonna do that by using these two 8 32nd by half inch flathead screws into the second and the fourth hole. And then we're going to use a washer, put the washer on, and then the nylock nut. And by the way, guys, this is a foam pad that I'm keeping this on, even though this is a wooden workbench, I don't wanna get this all scratched up, so I'm keeping this bezel on the foam pad to protect it. Screw goes through the fourth hole, washer goes on the screw, and then the nylock nut goes on the screw also. It's gonna be easier to go in from the screw side than the nut side because of this tab right here. Now utilize your nine millimeter wrench and your Phillips head screwdriver and tighten these down. Those are all nice and secure. Now I have noticed I have a lot more plastic showing than I wanted to. I'm just gonna take my rounded file and file that down a little bit. That way the plastic and this aluminum piece are have the exact same dimension. So I've gotten the second and the fourth screw nice and tight and secure in there. Once you get done, make sure you go back and look at all your holes to make sure they line up the way you want them to. Mine were a little off, I had to do a little adjusting but now they're spot on. All right guys, we're getting close. We've got the base plate mounted to the bezel. Now we're gonna take it to the truck. We're gonna fit it in and make sure that the two holes we drilled for the two brackets that are already on the head unit align. We're back on the truck. Let's see how this thing fits. So I did have some minor difficulties getting this bezel back on to where it covers the head unit. It was catching right around here. And what I did was I actually went in from the top and put this top edge in first, put the tabs into the holes, and then rolled the bezel down and it went right into place. Oh man, this thing is fitting great. The first one, you can see the threads. The fifth one, you can see the threads. I'm super excited this thing lined up perfectly. All right, let's take this thing off, get it back to the workbench. We have one more bracket to put on and then this thing's going on for good. Now we have to install the middle bracket. Now this has three brackets. Let me tell you how they go in. So looking at your stereo bezel, the short angled fat one, goes on number five spot. The very thin one goes on the number one spot. This Z-shaped 
thicker one, this goes right in the middle. And you can see these two are similar shaped and design, except the middle one is thicker. So this is the one we're working with right now. Orients so that the bracket head is facing to the right. And when you look down onto the hole, you can see this hole is offset. It is closer to the back than the front. That way the holes actually line up. If you have this backwards, the holes do not line up. And if you, they do line up, this will be over the edge and it will not fit on. So like I said, it orients to the right. Now we're going to be using a three quarter inch, eight thirty second screw, which is going to go on top and then a silver washer and a nylock nut. And again, using our nine millimeter wrench and our Phillips head screwdriver, gonna snug these down. Make sure this bracket is flush to the back and it will look like so. We're back in the truck and this thing is going in for the last time. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking the power port and I'm holding it up against the the indent where the cables need to be run. That way it doesn't get sucked to the right or the left of the actual indent. Put the bezel in like it's supposed to. Now applying even pressure. Perfect, look at that, nice and secure. Step number 12, and don't worry guys, we're almost there, there's only 15 steps. So we're so, so close. Step number 12 is going to be installing the thin bracket. And this goes closer to the driver's side and it orients to the left. I'm leaving all of these top screws in all of the brackets just so I don't lose them. You take your one inch, 832nd Phillips head bolt with a black washer and it's going to go into the bracket like so. And now we're going to start screwing this into the bracket that is behind the stereo. I was just checking the alignment of how these screws went in and the way this bracket is angled, it looks, you would think they wanna go straight down, but they don't. They actually wanna go down at an angle because inside of this panel, the bracket isn't flush. It's at an angle like this. So you have to move the top of this head towards the front of the vehicle to make sure that the threads align. You want this bracket to be a little loose so you can adjust it back and forth. That way when we put the 3T PAM on top of it, you can align these holes for these screws here. All right, finally, the last bracket. This one goes on the right side and the screw head goes up and the bend orients towards you like so. And we are using the same one inch screws as the last bracket. And again, keep this bracket loose so we can adjust it later. It's time to remove these screws, get them out of the way, make room for the bracket to fit in. And by the way, guys, a little stubby screwdriver definitely makes this job easier. Now don't lose these guys. So this is it, it's going in. I'm gonna grab the power port, I'm gonna push it through. Oh yeah, now we're going to be mounting up the high-speed charger here. The Phillips head screws obviously go through the front and the nuts go on the backside. And the locking washer part goes towards the block of the high-speed charger. So with your finger from the back, all you're gonna do is push it forward so that it's nice and flush with the plate. Push this all the way through. From the bottom, I can put the nut on pretty easily. And all I'm doing is trying to get this nut onto the back of it. And then I press it up against with my finger and then just spin the, the screw until the threads catch. And the three screws we just removed, we're putting right back in over the three T-PAM bracket. You can see that the screws are going into the recessed holes. The first one and then the second one and then the third one over here. Work from the middle first, because this is the bracket that cannot move. And then I worked to the driver's side, and then I went over to the passenger side and did that one. And when you're lining the holes, if they don't line up perfectly, remember you can use, this is a little file. This was actually very helpful to get the holes to line up. Now these are already started. I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna tighten this one down and tighten this side down. Now I'm moving to the passenger side to get this side tightened down. Now that all three of these top bolts 
are tightened down. You can feel behind and see which side the threads are on. And I'm basically tightening down the bracket on the inside to the two brackets that are attached to the head unit. And for the passenger side, tighten the inside bracket from right on the slotted hole. All right, guys, we have one final screw to put in to secure this completely to the dash. It is a silver self-tapping screw, Phillips head. It's very short, it's very obvious, only one in the bag. And it goes in this far left hole. Now, self-tapping screws into plastic should not be that challenging, of course, you never know. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to press down really hard and spin it, and hopefully it goes in. Well, there goes that idea. You have to feed the screw first by hand under the bracket and find the hole and then feed the screwdriver through the top hole. And now we're just gonna press down pretty hard until those threads break the plane the plastic and catch and go in. Whew. All right, that took a long time, but that is in nice and tight. We've got the 3T PAM installed and it looks amazing. However, we're not done. This is a wire cover. Now this isn't necessarily a necessity, but it does make the back of the 3T PAM look way nicer because you don't see any of the wires or any of the mounting. It's just a clean, nice slope back to it that goes right into the dash. It makes it look super factory. I highly suggest getting one. And this is how it mounts. So basically imagine that this is a plate that only holds the nuts in place for the back of the 3T PAM and the back of the wire cover. So this hooks into the 3T PAM and the wire cover goes in like this. So all you see is a seamless slope into the dash. Definitely worthwhile. In the bag of hardware are the six Phillip head black screws. This plate has two sides to it. One side is flat. On this side, you can see this is where they are tapped and we're going to be using the flat side facing up and we're going to put it so that it basically goes into the second, third and fifth of the holes you're not using thus far. And all we're going to do is place it on here and we're gonna put them on finger tight. And all we're doing is screwing this thing together, but leave it loose. I've gotten the three screws to the wire plate cover and they're just in here nice and loose. I'm just gonna snug one down to give this thing some rigidity, but still be able to loosen the one screw and move it if need be. Now we take the wire plate cover and it orients. So this little hook side right here is going to be on the driver's side and it will just kind of lay on here for now. And we're gonna take our screws and try to line up these holes. Let's tighten everything down. Oh man, that looks so good. That's not going anywhere. The 3T PAM is completely installed and it looks amazing. However, we're not done yet. One final screw to install. This is the screw we removed from the bottom of the dash underneath the steering wheel. So we're gonna get this thing installed and then we're finally done. The Expedition Essentials 3T PAM is installed. This thing is rock solid. It feels so sturdy. This thing could easily support an iPad. I have no concerns at all. And remember, these front holes are set up to accept the Ram mount diamond plate and the screws you need. I got these at Ace Hardware. They're just an Allen head. They're 10 30 seconds and these are one inch long. And I think that's a pretty good length. That way it gives plenty of sync, nothing comes loose. So I know you're super curious. How do they function? I don't know. Let's find out. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Adventure Build. My name is- Hey, Andy. my favorite show's on. I drove my 2020 Tacoma with the newly redesigned Expedition Essentials 3T PAM up this mountain and it didn't rattle a single time. It was rock solid. Now I only have two accessories. I have my phone and my tablet on there. However, it is the brand new iPad 10.2 inch. It is the big iPad, not the iPad Pro, but it's the biggest iPad they have and it was on there solid. The mount I have is a little janky. It's not the best. It was an Amazon deal. But as far as the 3T PAM, rock solid. No complaints. The install process was a little timely. Obviously, YouTube time, you can triple what it would be for a normal person. And it took me about six hours to do it. So I'm guessing a 
be about two hours for any normal person as a DIY install in their garage. So I hope you guys like the install. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit that subscribe button, hit like, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.